I was told I was going to have six months to live. All of the stress, all of the, you know, the fear, um, it's transforming it into something beautiful. You know, like this bald head doesn't represent chemo. It represents a warrior. Sarah Jackson, and I am a cancer fighter and mother of three and a child of God. Overall, the last 20 years, I was a caregiver for cancer patients and elderly patients um, who wanted to be on hospice and, and pretty much pass at home. So that's what I did for 20 years. And I loved every single bit of it. But honestly, when you are a single parent, your kids become your strength. And you learn a lot from your kids, um, just like they learn from you. And they don't realize how big of a role that they play in, you know, my mental well-being. They really do. Because, I mean, they're the reason for everything. They're the reason why I'm fighting to live and because if it was just me, I, I wouldn't, you know, I would be like, okay, I'm ready, because I know what waits for me, you know? So the kids are what keep you fighting, and um, I've got three of them. Um, Sean, he's 22, and Nevaeh's 17, and Genesis is 14. I've been through a lot of times where I've been at my lowest, and I've had to depend on others to take care of me. It's not just the chemo, it's not just the cancer. <clears throat> it's all the hard times that you go through, you have a tribe of people that go through them with you and they stick by you and then that helps you get through it and then you have God that you know he's, he's controlling everything even though we're making our own decisions. We're putting ourselves in the positions that we're in and he's walking, he doesn't leave our side either. He's walking through it with us, you know, um, and he's planning for the best outcome um, that's supposed to happen, I guess. I was driving across a highway and I was T-boned by an F-350 with a cattle guard and they airlifted me to university. Um, because of that car accident, it lacerated my liver and herniated um, my, I had an umbilical hernia, so where my belly button was, the bowel had come through. A little bit after that, I had to have surgery to fix that hernia because it had blocked my bowel. And so I went in, the surgeon nicked a vein, he didn't carterize it. Um, I died once in recovery, um, and once two days later in ICU. And it, that experience completely changed my life. I remember being in the ICU room, and I saw my dad and my son walking down the hallway, and they get to my room, and I said, my baby, and I passed out. Before that had happened, I'd had to use the bathroom, and my blood pressure had been really low since I'd been out of surgery. It was like 13 over seven or 12 over seven, and they couldn't give me any pain meds or anything, um, but I felt a huge pressure, and I told them, I need to sit up, I need to sit up and they were trying to push me down and I was fighting them off to sit up because I just felt like I couldn't breathe. I was going to, I don't know, I just, I, I felt like my light was going out. And so I stood up and blood poured from all my incisions. I had four incisions. And I remember the, the ICU room, this side uh, from the bed to the wall was covered in blood. And I remember I was really, really cold first, and I was weightless. I had this wave of peace and happiness and just utter joy wash over me. It, it, I, it was like that feeling just made me weightless. I couldn't feel anything after that, and I was like speeding up to this. This light is just so bright, it just engulfs you so bright that you can't, 
I couldn't stand up. I, I had to like, I had to fall down. I, I had to lay on, flat on my face. I couldn't take the glory of God. And I know that's what it was. God spoke to me, he said, it's not your time. I'm not finished with you yet. You have more to do. And after that, it, I was, I came to. Being in that presence changed everything. Seeing this and having the experience, it just, it made it personal. It made it real. And it took away all fear, all doubt of what waits for us. You know, I was told I was gonna have six months to live um, without chemo and a year to three years with chemo. And I hope and pray, and I'm pretty sure <laughs> that God's will is for me to look back five years from now and see this video and be able to be a testament to what he's able to do. Um, I'm a super huge fan of Beyond the Canvas. And I had actually, I was gonna try to, you know, help you out, but it was right before I was diagnosed and I was sick all the time. And I didn't really know what was going on with my body either. Um, but I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Beyond the Canvas. And also I just, Going into chemo and seeing all these different ages, different you know races of sexes of, of people, you, all these different people from different walks of life, and mostly women, but there are some men there, um, and they're so sad. And you can see the worn, you can see them worn out. Like I feel it. I'm worn out. Each chemo becomes harder to recover from. Each chemo takes more out of you and you kind of feel like you're dying. After chemo, you feel like you're dying and you don't know if you're gonna make it through. Your head is bald, embrace it. Embrace what you're going through. Embrace the hardness of it. Embrace the, the tragedy of it, you know? Em embrace all of it and just take it in and then swallow it up and then speak what you want to happen. Me being painted is like being able to show the world that without words. Being able to show my story without words and give hope without words. This is a day and age where we're, everyone's masked up. And while it's useful, um, especially for people like me, thank you for wearing your masks, <laughs> you know. Um, it's a glimpse into the soul. And it's also a way of being able, you know, to give back to the, the chemo patients that are there, to be able to see a spark in their face that maybe they just haven't, just one spark, just one day, just one moment. Those are the things that I look for. Just that, the next moment. All of the stress, all of the, you know, the fear, um, it's transforming it into something beautiful. You know, like this bald head doesn't represent chemo. It represents a warrior. It represents someone who loves life and loves my family and loves my tribe enough to fight for them because I don't want them to have to suffer. It's okay to cry. That's part of life too. And it's raw and it's real. And it's who we are and it doesn't represent weakness. I used to think that. It represents, I know, I just, you, you need to let your emotions out. You don't just hang on to them. And if you cry, it's okay. It's okay to cry because in those tears are strength. You know, in those tears are, are power. I just, I'm, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for you setting this up 
and be able to have this experience, like it's, it means the world and it's, it's time to get transformed. <laughs> I'm just excited. I'm very excited. And I'm, I'm thankful for every single one of you. That was awesome, guys. Thank you. Artist Rita was patient with me and the fact that all of these people came together to shoot me and paint me is absolutely appreciated and I am totally in awe of everyone and especially my artist she just lit up my my body a piece of her soul is on me. I can feel it. And I'm just so beyond grateful for every single person. It's, it's like a dream come true. Yes, the image. Oh my goodness, the image. Okay, so the image on my head, and, and Rita came up with this amazing artist. So the image on my head is actually my cancer. It's my type of cancer. So it's squamous cell carcinoma, an actual image of the T cells attacking my cancer cells. And it kind of looks like flowers. So, <laughs> you know, that's, that's pretty awesome. That is actually quite awesome.